Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Waves from Slidenerd here. In the previous video, I was talking about variables and scope. In this video, my whole purpose is to experiment and show you guys a little things that we can do with variables. In other words, I'm gonna play with variables a little bit and we're gonna see what works and what doesn't. So first things first, let's go here and make a variable say test equals to high. If you say alert over here and print test inside, just go to Google Chrome here. And as you guys notice, it says hi over here. Now one of the things that I need to tell you, and if you guys even noticed, it was that I did not write var over here. I just wrote test equals to high. Now this is the way you make global variables here in JavaScript. In other words, if you want to make something global, either keep it outside all the other code or don't have a var keyword in front of it. Now other than that, let's take a look at something over here. If I remove this, if I put two parentheses here, and if I say test equals to high, let's take a look if that is accessible here. Test equals to high, again go back to Google Chrome here. And it still prints high. Now notice the difference, if we go back, close this. This time, I have a parenthesis over here, an opening and a closing parenthesis. So when I say test equals to high, the life cycle normally, in other words the life of this variable test is within these parentheses as per something called variable scope. But since we have not written the var keyword, it's treated as a global variable, which means you can access it anywhere and you can declare it anywhere. So that was my idea behind showing you this. Now let's remove this again. Now of course you can initialize things with whatever you want. Let's say number one. Actually, number one equals to nothing. Just say var number one and print number one here. So at this point, like I said, if you don't give any values, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna be undefined. And there you go, that says undefined over here. Now let's try something. Let's say where number two equals to number one into 100, something like that. Let's just print number two and take a look at what happens. So you go here, go Google Chrome this time, and it says NAN, which means not a number. Now anything that you do with undefined gives you not a number in terms of result. So let's take a look at something else. Now, if you're not giving values to variables in JavaScript, then you're supposed to give them a null by default. So now this time where number one is null, number two is number one into 100. What is null into 100? Let's take a look at that. You go to Google Chrome back here. And if you guys notice, it says zero. So null in JavaScript is treated like zero. Now, one of the things that we want to check is undefined equals to null. So let's say where there is just number two here. Now notice carefully, number one has the value null. Number two has not been given any values, which means it is equals to undefined. Now to check if both of them are equal, we use this condition which says number one equals equals. Actually, this is a way of comparing both. In other words, if you write double equals in JavaScript, it means find the value of number one, check if its value matches with the value of number two. So let's just print this out. Let's just cut this and put this inside our alert where we can simply write alert number one equals equals number two. It says true. Can you believe that? One of them has a value of null. The other one does not have any values assigned which means it is undefined and yet when you say number one equals equals number two it gives true. In JavaScript, null is logically equal to undefined. Remember that one, very important. Now we will be digging about the null and the undefined data type in a lot more detail. Now another thing that you can do in JavaScript is of course you can remove where number two over there and you can just put number two here. Again, that makes no difference. The code is going to run the same way. There's not a single where keyword. It's going to initialize both the variables. As you guys see, it says true again over here. Let's close this. Now you can also have different data types, something like that. Now let me show you what I mean here. here. Number one is 100. Now at this point, number one contains a numeric value, which is 100. Let me remove this alert statement here. Now in the lower statement, I can go here and I can say something like number one equals to high. Now this means that the type of value that number one contains has completely changed. In the above step, it was nothing but a number. In the second step, it is actually a string or you can say a set of characters grouped together to form a word. That's what you call as a string in JavaScript. So if you print number one right now, 
what do you think it's gonna display it's gonna display the most recent value which is gonna be high as you guys notice now this is perfectly legal in JavaScript and other programming languages if you guys are aware of them well it's not always legal directly like this now however JavaScript doesn't really have constraints about what type of data can be allocated now this is not recommended now last but not the least let's talk about the scope of a variable if you remember the previous video I said that scope of a variable is the life of the variable where it can be accessed in other words how famous is it if you have where over here and if you say number one where number one is known anywhere inside the script code now let's say I make a function here now in my previous video if you guys have seen it I have made a mistake and I'm sorry for that the lifetime or the scope of a variable comes into picture only when you're talking about functions or loops now let me show you a simple example of what I'm trying to tell you let's say let's make a function here by saying function say hi now if you guys don't know what a function is don't worry about it for now just remember that I've written something function here and there's something called say hi with two parentheses there are two brackets over here now within this if I make another variable see where number two equals to one and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go outside the function now remember this is the body of the function in other words this is the definition of a function the code inside this parentheses belongs to what you call as the function over here like I said if you don't know functions don't worry about it we will talk about it later now outside the function body if I go here and if I see alert over here I can print number one no doubts about it but if I go and print number two there is gonna be a problem because you see number two was made inside these two brackets in other words it is only known or it is only famous inside these two parentheses anybody outside the brackets doesn't know that there is some person called number two on this planet it's less like your Hollywood stars versus regional stars number one is like your Hollywood star who is known everywhere in the world number two is like a regional actor who probably the people in your country or your city know but other than that not many people are aware of them so if you go to Google Chrome right now and if you notice it says 10 over here click OK and it runs now if you go close this over here number one number two now let's run this again and let's take an important look over here go to inspect element there is console here it says uncaught reference error number two is not defined and it also tells you the line number which is variables test dot html dot line 12 so if you close the Chrome over here and if you go to line 12 I should have clicked on show line numbers here there you go let's line 12 this is the line where the problem is because here you're saying alert number two but number two is not known here number two is known only within these two brackets so what we did here in this video was basically a set of experiments to figure out how variables work in a better way than what you guys have been doing so far so in the next video we're gonna dig further into JavaScript and we're going to take a look at data types and other things in JavaScript and of course explore them in detail. In the meantime, if you guys do like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slide Nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.